it's all about your mindset it's all about the, the how you talk to yourself the yeah, eyes straight. that can see past time so yeah. i would encourage you to focus on that and start to talk to yourself in a positive way you can't give what you don't have yeah. i truly believe that so if you don't love yourself if you don't understand how to love yourself and take care of yourself you can't give that <laughs>Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Brood with Hustle. We've got an interesting guest here today who's really passionate about the stuff that he does. We'll get into that. We've got Casey back there behind the in the studio drinking some beer. I think I caught him mid-sip. You sure did. Oh, hey, <laughs> you're you're going to do that a lot today, man. Uh, man, I'm I'm drinking the 49 today, you know, Sky Dance okay. Creation, man. It, it's it's honestly it's my favorite. Yeah. Um oatmeal stout and it's pretty low alcohol percentage, so All I can right. sit here and drink a bunch of them. You know, usually with a stout, I'm limited to a couple. Yep. <laughs> you know, I can have a few more of these. Some people don't drink stouts this time of year. A little too warm. Well, you know, some people, there's some people. I'm going to bust into Sovereign Nation. Imperial Stout, 10% ABV. So uh, this will be a sipper. 10% alcohol. So... And this is our third interview for the day. So. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll take this one easy. So. so, I've only had three beers then. There you go. Yeah. There you go. What else you been up to, Casey? Man, not a whole lot. You know, just uh, doing the grind, man, trying to get everything going and mm-hmm. working on the hustle and just trying to get it all done, man. It's definitely warming up, man. I'm ready for uh, hopefully things kind of get back to normal before too long. I'm ready to kind of get outside and do stuff, you know. I hear you, man. And, man, what I hate hearing is everybody saying, you know, wonder what the new normal is going to be. It's yeah. just going to be normal. There's not yeah. a new normal. It's, yeah. it's just normal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, it's a more of a matter of when that happens. Right. So we'll see. All right, man, we're going to get on to the interview for today, and I'm really excited about this one. This is a guy that I just recently met. His name is Kevin Rivera. He's the founder and owner of Modern Tribal Nations, a native-owned business casual leisure wear company. His business allowed himself to reinvent himself. He has a passion for making an impact on his native community. His unwavering pride comes from his indigenous background. He firmly believes that neither gender nor ethnicity can limit our destined purpose. He's a member of the Apache tribe of Oklahoma. He's young, motivated, and lives with a purpose. Hey, hey, Kevin hey. Rivera. What's Aho, happening? Brother. What's going on, Mr. Jake? I'm excited to be here. Thank yeah, you so man. much for uh, inviting me, especially the phone call. Was pretty, uh, yeah. I was pretty stoked after our first phone call. So. We, I appreciate you driving down. How long did it take you to get over here? About a solid, if there's no traffic, probably about 50 minutes. Yeah, all yeah, right. There's well, no traffic. Now, I appreciate you coming down. One thing we didn't put in there, too, uh, you do a little farming, right? Yeah, I uh, definitely helped my mother-in-law out. Uh, she has a farm out there. Well, definitely for me, it's about learning the knowledge. She has her master's degree in animal science. Yep. And so for me, I really feel like it'd be awesome for our tribes to get back into agriculture. And mm-hmm. so I'm just trying to gain as much as knowledge I can from her. And uh, we have about 17 head out there. Okay, cool. Well, man, let's start off with uh, Modern Tribal Nations. Just kind of tell us what your company does and uh, when, when did you get started? Oh, in 2015, we had got started. Um, at the time, I was just got laid off from the oil field. Mm-hmm. And so we had some money saved up and uh, had just drawn unemployment. Uh, make a long story short, I had ran across some blankets and uh, brought them back. And at the time, I was just providing for the family. Yeah. It was like, I got to do something. And I never seen that product here. Mm-hmm. And so I was one that I wasn't the first one, but I feel like I was one of the first ones to bring that soft plush yeah. blanket around and uh did really good with it set up yeah. with the shout out to manny muro he's got a barbershop in indarco um it's a uh, f- uh fresh cuts yeah. but that's where i started i set up in front of his barbershop he allowed yeah. me to sit up there and uh, that's how it all began i got a okay. picture of it too the first right. table cool man cool all right so now you're you have a you've got a website you're selling all kinds of stuff on there you kind of told me about some of your challenges of getting started and what you've done I'll, i'm gonna tell you most interesting thing not most interesting the most amazing thing that i heard from you from your story when we talked on the phone the other day is that you're doing all this on a cell phone <laughs> and so what it's what's cool about that so when i came across your stuff um a lot of a lot of my uh, uh native f- family cousins friends 
I noticed were um, sharing some of your videos. Mm -hmm. um, you go live all the time on your on your Facebook page, yes, right? Sir. Like, yes, is sir. that every day? Yeah, yeah. It was during the month of uh, May because we was going through yeah. a pandemic. So I was giving, a, I was doing a giveaway the whole month. Yeah. And then I switched it to Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Yeah, yeah. Modern Tribal Nations. Go check it out on Facebook. There you go. <laughs> but yeah, man. So the fact that you basically run your entire business from your cell phone was incredible to me, <laughs> because I mean the website looks good, the social media is good. You stay pretty active on there. We, you told me a little bit, kind of, you know, the the amount of sales that you do on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. um, and so it really made me think about one of the purposes of this podcast is to, you know, inspire people yes. to do do things in business, to, to become entrepreneurs, to do the things that they want to do. And we all think we have these things that hold us back, yes. things that keep us from doing it. And here's a guy hanging out on a farm with a cell phone and he's running his entire company from, uh, from the cell phone, man. <laughs> so, you know, tell me kind of how the business works. Like what's with the... Is, is online sales direct to customers? Is that most of your revenue? Well, I do want to appreciate the question, but I want to back up a little bit and explain that what we represent is how what, what my heart is, is to give back. Mm -hmm. That's with my heart. Both of my, my brothers here, but both of my parents gave. That's what I, I grew up understanding. Yeah. Like they gave their time, they gave their prayers, they gave the house meetings. And so that's the whole concept. And my ultimate goal was to create Modern Tribal Motivations Outreach Program down there for Inadarko and like yeah. a boys and girls club because there's nothing to do after after school. And yeah. I feel like, you know, idle times the devil's playground. So for me, that's the whole goal. And in order to do that, you have to be all in, which yeah. is that's where the slogan comes in. Yeah. So no matter what your path is, whether even if it's the wrong way, shout out to Jim Run. And my brother uh, introduced me to Jim Run, but Jim Run talks about even if it's the wrong direction, you'll know faster. Yeah. You know, yeah. and so that's what we represent is I'm all in on this craft. I had no idea about business. I had mm -hmm. no idea what revenue was. I now do it. I didn't have no idea how to get my, how to calculate your expenses, um, even get you net profit. Yeah. I did not understand any of that. And I feel like my lack of knowledge allowed me to truly be all in because yeah. I feel like some people overthink it. So when you know what you have to do, now you cancel yourself out because you're like, yeah. I don't have that. I don't have that help. I don't have a business plan. Now you overthink it. Mm -hmm. So I feel like my secret was is I didn't know nothing. I was all in from the beginning yeah. and I wasn't scared to fail. Yeah. yeah. So I just hope that um, that's what we represent. So when you do buy our clothing or anything, the concept is you're, you're representing motivation, positivity, mm -hmm. try to help inspire. And I, I can uh, I can keep going, but that's also what we represent. So, mm -hmm. as far as the clothing line and the revenue to sales online, I mainly I'm glad you brought up my phone is because uh, that really I want to say thank you because I um I look at that as a how do I say as a monkey on my back where because mm -hmm. I don't know the website I don't know a computer I don't know. Uh, things like that so I kind of am shy but from you you're telling me that that's motivating yeah you know what I mean yeah. so like we all have a story where I want to share with something yep. a, a story about with my my brother but how far your story goes mm -hmm. and I'll, I'll say it because I know you can edit it because you may edit it out but basically my um I have, a, uh, I have a friend I met through my brother he's yeah. a bodybuilder and when this pandemic happened he couldn't go to the gym he had no weights at his house yeah I seen him all of a sudden use uh center blocks for mm -hmm. weights, squats, and he was using a bar and he was on bench and everything. And I shared that with one of my friends that's trying to lose weight. He's older and he couldn't go to the gym. He got discouraged. He ended up taking that. He started working out himself through just anything yeah. he had around his house. He made a video of that. The IHS got a hold of him and at wants him to do a video about how you can just use anything around yeah. your house, you know, milk jugs and whatnot. And it came from all the way from my friend, you know what I mean? My, my yeah. brother's friend where he had no idea. I want to, when I speak yeah. this to him, it's going to be cool because you have no idea that somebody's always watching you. Yep. It's always watching you and you're leading people. Just what are you leading them to? Yeah. So, so he makes the video on, on an IHS. Uh, it's just, just a way for them to kind of, get it out to na to native people that hey you know this is this is a way that you can still stay in shape during this yes and it was so exciting because all this stuff started from here and goes to yeah. me goes to him goes to IHS and now they're going to do it like this yeah. and now they're going to be out there and it's going to help motivate people and that's what it's all about inspiring yeah. each other we're all going through something that's one that was one thing that was crucial to me to understand that we're all going through something yeah. every single person on this earth and we are we like to look right or left and see see what they have and the white picket fence and their family and their business but you have no idea what they yeah. went through to get that you have yeah. no idea the sacrifices and you don't know the sacrifices that they're doing to maintain it yep. 
And so that's why, you, for me, once I put my blinders on and I start staying focused on my path and start comparing myself to other people, and I also, there's another trick, I stop, can't, I stop worrying what other people think of me. Yeah. And that's crucial because there is a thousand different versions of you out there. Yeah. And that's between them, that's yep. their version of you. Yep. You know, when you're on that path of changing, yeah, you I, block that's out not me the haters. no more. That's, yes. Yeah, that's yes. for sure. There it is. Okay, so when you decided that this is something you wanted to do, this was a business, I want to go start this business, how long did it take before it actually happened? Oh, uh, at the time when we very first started, it was KHK Designs. So mm -hmm. my I was in the oil field. My wife was a stay-at-home mother, but she's very crafty. Mm -hmm. So she would never just stay at home. So she had was doing baby clothes. We got a border machine, mm -hmm. a six-needle border machine. So she was making baby clothes on the side, and we had a little boutique store in Stillwater she was renting mm -hmm. out. So when, when this all happened, we ended up starting KHK Designs where we had the blankets, but we also had her baby clothes because we yeah. pulled them out of that store. And so that's kind of how all this started. And then what happened was I went to my tribe for help. And um, it's politics. Some people yeah. didn't like my mom in there. And so, but it was a blessing. I always look at the blessing. She, I went and had a meeting with the business committee and, uh, for help. And she asked me if I took any business classes. Mm -hmm. And I said, no. I said, but if you guys would love to help me, I would love to be able to take these classes. And make a long story short she was like we'll help you if you take business classes if you take this and that so i did yeah. my research and i ran across the way we talked about the uh Na national center of economic development yeah, that's what it was too, then yeah. um i know it changed the name and gary davis was the president back then yeah. shout out to gary davis and yeah. what he's doing for the community um but so there was khk designs modern tribal nations was in my head so 2015 where khk designs modern tribal nations in my head my tribe ch challenges me to go to this class i research and find him they're going to be in tulsa it was a four-day conference my tribe shout out to them they end up helping me um they actually paid for the the conference they paid for my room they gave me uh, comp money and um modern tribal nations was born yeah, yeah from that sure. point because i can go in depth and how i was born but from that conference yeah. i'd met somebody there shared them with them my idea and she said i love it she wrote it on a napkin and yeah. we just took off from that point so something i want to ask you about so a lot of people you know even though this is oklahoma and and most people live in oklahoma have some sort of connection or relationship with tribes or, mm -hmm. or other or native americans right and I think one of the things a lot of people that are non-native don't understand, even even in Oklahoma, is that we're not a thing from the past, mm -hmm. right? We're actually real. We're here. Mm -hmm. And that there are some challenges that we face inherently that we inherited from our parents or whatever because of things that happened in the past. Like it does take a long time to overcome certain things. In your experience, start you know, wanting to create your own company, wanting to be an entrepreneur culturally um, or the way you were raised, um, were there challenges you had to overcome, kind of maybe mindset, oh, wow. stuff like that? Great question because it was major challenges. So for me personally, and this is part of my story that I want to share with people, is I wasn't able to grow up in our culture. Mm -hmm. So I was raised in church. My grandfather was a Pentecostal preacher. And my dad was an interdenominational preacher. Mm -hmm. So growing up, we really wasn't allowed to go to church. Back in that era, it was either church or traditions. Yeah. Today, you know, you kind of intermingle them. Yeah. So um, what happened was is I grew up around my native family on my Kiowa side every Christmas, every mm -hmm. Thanksgiving. We're going to my grandma's house. She's a Satoke, she's a Satoke or maiden name, and she's a um, Stella Satoke is her maiden name, Stella mm -hmm. Revere. My grandpa, Vic, Victor Revere. My grandfather's Puerto Rican, so that's where Puerto Rican comes in. Yeah. Um, but he married my grandma. She's full blood at Kiowa, and uh, that's I don't know anything about the Puerto Rican side. We, yeah. So we saw my Kiowa cousin. So I saw we grew up like that. And what happened was, is I ended up going through an angry stage. Yeah. Meaning, I started to people was asking me, you know, what are you, what yeah. not, and I would tell them I'm native. But here's here's the catch: I knew nothing. So yeah. when they would ask me questions, and what was a big turn on to me or turn off, I guess I should say. I want to say that, but. My mo my wife's mother was really intrigued, and she mm -hmm. had a lot of questions, and I didn't have no answers. And I started really thinking, that's like claiming that you're a Christian, and somebody's asking you how to pray, and you're like, I don't know. Yeah. Or they're asking yeah. you, who's Jesus? And you're like, I don't know. So I was like, how can yeah. I claim that? So that's when I started doing some research. It's like, why? The first question to me is, on my mom's side, we have a lot of family members that drink mm -hmm. themselves to death on my yeah. Apache side, like really good. Yeah. And I, I started thinking what the question was, is why is this happening so much to our people compared to, you know, any other ethnicity? 
and I start looking up the archives, and it does go back to these boarding schools. Yep. It goes yeah. back to literally, and and I got angry. So many people don't understand that. Mm. Like there's so there's so many people that don't realize that. I mean, it wasn't that long that long ago that the United States government's um, policy on Native Americans was basically to rid us, rid us of our culture and mm. traditions and. And save I mean, the Indian, save the man, kill the Indian. Yeah, yeah. That and was so, the philosophy. And so, like, even in, in my family, so I have a very similar story in the fact that my my mom's Native American, my dad's white. Uh, my mom left when I was three years old, and I was raised by my white dad, but I was raised in a Native American community mm-hmm. in the absentee Shawnee area. And But I didn't really, when I was really young, didn't get to know my Iowa or Osage or Oto family until I got a little bit older and I real, you know, the thing about it is when my mom, my mom was taken from my grandma and grandpa when she was young, like Mm -hmm. two or three years old. And that was before they had policies in place to try to keep native kids and native families. Right. And so at that point in time, I mean, it was, they, they were just looking to take native kids away and put them with a white family and that's what and that's, the state gets money for yeah it. yeah and that's what happened and what they don't what now i think they you know people realize and see more is that the the way that tears apart our culture mm-hmm. and, it, and it keeps people from from like us from being able to grow up in that in that you know with that knowledge and understanding of who we are that kind of stuff you yes. know it's really i mean Things that, that everybody thinks these things that happen to Native Americans happened 200 or 100 years ago, mm-hmm. you know, and they don't realize that some of it's actually still happening right now. To our grandparents. Yeah. Like, yeah. really, like, I would always tell my, you know, talk to my brother about it, but, you know, my grandparents, we went, my grandma went to boarding school. Both my parents went to boarding schools. Mm-hmm. Now they, they did go to Indarco and Carnegie for a little bit. For most part, they went yeah. to Fort Wayne Indian schools. We was the first generation to grow up in a public school our whole yeah. lives. So yeah. that's how close it is yeah. to me, you know what I mean, to understand that. Like, even my grandma, when she was little, they said that uh, when she spoke Kiowa, they put soap in her mouth. Yeah. You know, which is, I didn't know that till I got older. Yeah. When I started doing this research and I started thinking. So here's, the, so the, to finish that thought off is, so I was angry for a good year, and then I was like, hold on here. I was blaming it. I was blaming the government. I was blaming um I was blaming the church. I was blaming, you know, and then I start realizing who's stopping me today from learning my culture. Yeah. Who's stopping me today from learning it besides my pride, yep. besides, you know, I'm too old, besides me worrying about what other people yeah. think. And that's when it clicked is, you know what, I'm going to go all in. And, and what I do is when you see me dance, score dance or anything, I'm part of the Kyle Gord clan and I'm part of the Apache Blackfoot ceremonies. But when you see me, I'm all in. I'm dancing with, I'm dancing with everything. And so I chose to just switch that flip and go all in to learn my culture. Yeah. And so that's the difference to me. I want to show, I want to show you guys it's never too late. It's yeah. never too late. So I didn't start getting back into my culture and dancing and learning until I was probably, I'm 37. I was around 33. Oh, and really? so now my daughter. Is that she, when you started dancing? Yeah. yeah. So now my daughter is going to grow up. And I think she was four or five. So all she knows is powwows. All yeah. she know. And so she's a southern cloth and she dances um, uh, buckskin, southern yeah. buckskin. But so that was, that's my story is to share with you guys. I want to get that out there that literally it's never too late. Yeah. So even if you didn't grow up in it, it's never to stop worrying yeah. what other people think of you. When you yeah. stop worrying what other people think of you, you can move mountains in your yeah. life. And yeah. that was the key for me. And you know, like what really, uh, one of the big purposes of this podcast is to have a lot of native owned companies, uh, you know, represented in this podcast. And one of the reasons I wanted to have you on is your brand, your apparel, all the stuff that you put out is really exposing a lot of people not just natives to our culture mm. and to you know to you know showing people that hey look at these guys they they can do more than just have a casino yes. you know they yes. they they can create businesses these guys can be entrepreneurs that's why with our beers you know we name them after whether it's like fancy dance or different things within our culture because we're we're our beer is going our, we're targeting people that aren't native Mm -hmm. and so these non-native people are going to drink these beers and see these stories on the back of these cans and learn a lot about native american culture and that it's actually something that's still here right now and it's not something just from the past yes so i think like are i want to ask you like are there things that you do with your design work your apparel that you put out 
that is geared towards like trying to keep the culture alive and put it out there? Oh, for sure. That's what the whole logo is yeah. about. So I'll explain what the logo means. So, and this is how it was explained to me. And I know in different, uh, in different tribes, there's different meanings. So yeah. I respect that, but this is how it was explained to me from an elder. And so at, what we have is the medicine wheel up there. And um, <clears throat> the reason that it's a circle is what was told to me is the reason we dance in a circle is yeah. because God's forever, God's perpetual. So mm -hmm. that's the reason we dance in a circle. So the TP represents in the Southern tribes, that was our home slash church. Um, the sun represents good, going to darkness to bad. We've got to battle good and bad. Mm -hmm. The buffalo is in the background is my Kiowa name is Paul Key. Yeah. And it means buffalo man. So I added the buffalo. So I know that not all tribes lived in teepees. Yeah. And so what I added, I added the, the arrows for protection and hunting because that's universal. Mm -hmm. And the four feathers or the eagle feathers at the bottom. Um, what was told to me is the reason that we use the eagle feathers for our ceremonies and whatnot is because we felt like it flew the closest to the creator. It flew the yeah. highest. So it was the closest to the creator. So we added those. Of course, they represent the four seasons, the four directions. We're having four in there, and it's unity. So when you go in, so I'll go, this is what, it, also, this is my lame terms of it. Uh -huh. So um, the top, well, I'll take it back. I'm going to tell you the real meaning, and then I'll tell you my lame <clears> terms. So <throat> the top, the top represents you respect the creator. Yeah. The second is you respect the nature, you respect each other, and you respect yourself. That's a circle of life. So respect the creator. You respect nature, his creation, you respect each other, and then you respect yourself. And I feel like that's how we lived in Baton. It was very simple. It's very simple when you, li when you live like that. And I feel like we're backwards. We're yeah. very selfish. You know what I mean? And then we think possibly other people. We might put nature, and then we might throw God in there somewhere. Yeah. So I feel like we're, we're completely backwards. So it represents unity. And then uh, as far as to take it further, my, lame, my lame's terms is the black represents all the black people in the world. The red represents all the brown people in the world. The yellow represents all the Asians. And the white represents all the Caucasians. And it's team, uni it's team human. Yeah. You yeah, know, we cool. all need each other. You know what I mean? So yeah. that's why I had a lot of meaning. Shout out to this, though. Travis Komachi at Intertribal mm -hmm. Divisions, uh, Intertribal Visions out of Lawton. He's the one who really took this idea out of my head and made it a reality. So he helped mm -hmm. me design that. So I definitely want to give him a shout out. But, you know, I had, I had a lot of deep meaning into it when I, when I wanted to create it because I knew when I was going to do something like this, I can explain it. And then somebody that's never heard the culture will be like, oh, that's cool. They can do yeah. their own research on the medicine wheel and um, or whatnot. And then that, that's what it's about. So it's yeah. really, it's yeah. a, and then I narrowed it all the way down. I, just the research, I had too much color. So yeah. I couldn't put that in. And that's yeah. when I outlined it. So now okay. it's just the outline. Yeah. So yeah. almost like a Nike check. Yeah. That's kind of what the goal is, is just to use the outline of my logo. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's the meaning of it. Hopefully yeah. I, you caught that and that, cool. that makes sense. Cool, cool. So you talked a little bit about, you know, that your tribe helped you go to the conference, mm -hmm. set that stuff up for you. But, you know, what's the support really been like from your tribe as far as helping you with getting your business started or, or even thereafter? Uh, the support is definitely there from our elders. I knew when I started this, my, this project that I had to get the respect from the elders. Mm hmm I, I knew that. So when I went into this, I understood that. So right now, that is the back end. As far as financially, anything like that, there really is no help. But as far as them believing in me mm -hmm. and them giving, calling me, checking on me, um, sending me messages, like that's all there. So as far as uh, what, what emotional support, yeah. that's definitely there. And they really believe in what I'm doing and the message that we're bringing. So that makes me excited because yeah. you got to have respect for the elders. Like they have yeah. to. Yeah. I mean, that's before you can do anything. And so that's what makes me excited because I understood that. That is one thing that I, that I fundamentally understood is in order for me to do anything great, I got to have respect these elders. Yeah, yeah. And so, um, yeah. So what are, what are some things that you think the tribes could do to really bring more of an entrepreneurship I'm cult glad you culture asked that question. <laughs> to our people? So one of my ultimate goals, I would say the ultimate goal, whether this happens in my lifetime or not, is to help unite all 39 tribes. I believe there's 39 unrecognized there's 39 tribes, but 38 recognized tribes from the government. But my goal, my philosophy is to help unite all tribes. If one tribe is failing, we're all failing. Have that mm -hmm. philosophy. Because as you're talking about these chambers of commerce and these gov the governor and the mayors of these towns, they don't understand. They can't tell the difference between your tribe and my tribe, Apache yeah. between the Oto mm -hmm. or Osage between the Kiowa. And so in my mind, today we speak the same tongue. Yeah. How are we not united better today than we yeah. are ever? But I understand that the reason, you know, we all have our own constitutions. That's the hardest part. We, are, we all have our own presidents. We all have our own um, policies that are different, and you help your district. Yeah. But what, how I see how we can do it is create, like, a United Nations for the tribes. Yeah. 
And so basically when whatever, I like give you an example, my tribes run off roughly 12 programs yeah. compared to the Comanches, 88 programs. Yeah. You know, I'm sure compared to the Cherokees, how many they got. So yeah. collectively, if we can we're, say we're, our education's failing, say our housing's failing, we all come together and figure out how we can fix it mm -hmm. for each other. And collectively, because what people don't understand and what I want to give to the people is America is, is when the tribes are flourishing, this is one thing they understand is we get back to the road systems. Yeah. We get yeah. back to the education. We get back to water systems. We get back to police departments. Yep. We get back to fire departments. We get back to bridges, building bridges. The money, the revenue stays here in Oklahoma. Yeah. Like that's what people don't understand. So the farmers eat. So when a tribe's eating in an area, I guarantee you everybody's eating in the Chick Chickasaw yep. district. Yep. Everybody from the technology, from the farmers, from the mm -hmm. construction workers, from the cement crews, everybody. And so that's one of my biggest, and to me, that's what would help economically because yeah. at that point you can revenue. In my opinion, this is out. I'd love to dream big, but I can see trillions. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're, we're, they call us nations within the nation. Yeah. You know what I mean? So we're have these are all nations within the nation in Oklahoma. So we can almost have a, a complete sovereign nation within Oklahoma. Yeah. Like that's my ultimate goal. And I, I've shared that with a few elders and they try to <laughs> discourage you because they're like, you yeah. know what? Good luck because we, you can't even get one tribe to get along, yeah. let alone all of them. I said, well, I'm glad you said that because yeah. if, if, if you don't think I'm crazy, then I'm not dreaming big enough. Yeah. And that's I think there's a lot we can learn from our elders in our tribes, but I also think that there's you know, it's a different world now. Yeah. And we can either complain about it or we can succeed in it. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a lot of things that I like that I'm seeing from the, our our younger natives like yourself that are taking a different attitude in that, okay, you know what, we can play in this game. Mm -hmm. We we can be a bigger part of this. We can we can quit complaining and actually do something big in it. And I think it's going to take the younger people to actually have a little bit of a shift in mindset yes. to do some of these bigger, greater things and come up with these ideas that you're talking about. Do you have, do you have like a lot of younger native people like your age that you hang out with that have those same ideas? Or do you feel like a lot of them are still kind of influenced by those old, older ideas of, you know, not being able to do stuff? That's a good question. I think that's subjective uh, because it all it's like kind of like beer, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like certain people like certain beers. So it's kind of a, a difficult question, but I do want to agree with it. It takes your mindset. Yeah. Everything everything changes when you change your mindset. Yeah. You look at yourself different, and that's a big part of what I want to bring to the table is is you're not supposed to know what you don't know. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. But continue to go because if you have the mindset you win or learn, I'm telling you, there's nothing that can stop you because even when you fail, you don't fail because you extract them lessons. Mm -hmm. So I'm going for a building right now to, to possibly the headquarters of Modern Travel Nations and how I'm looking at it is, I either either going to get it or I'm going to learn something, yeah. you know? So for my next time, I'll be more prepared. I'll mm -hmm. have, I'll have learned basically what I did not have. And if I did get it, then I'll also have learned something. So you, when you really think of it like that, you never lose, yeah. you never lose because there's, I, I was talking to my brother about this is, but, um, they said, well, you learn from what works, but you also learn from more of what not works. Yeah. And that's just it. Even God learns more for what didn't work. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So like, so from us, it's the same concept. If you have that failure, you won't know what success is unless you yeah. fail. I'll tell you what I'd, what I'd really like to see tribes do more of is, so I think we did a really good job for a long time, especially when we started dipping our shoes into gaming, mm -hmm. right? Like we did a good job of building our tribes economies and becoming uh, a powerhouse, especially in Oklahoma. A lot of the tribes have, you know, they, they have a big footprint on the economy of Oklahoma. But now I think one of the things I want to see is tribes do more to help the individual mm -hmm. tribal members ha have that same impact, you know, and build mm -hmm. their businesses and become entrepreneurs and that kind of stuff. I don't see a lot of tribes really um, put those programs in place to help, you know, an, uh, a native entrepreneur either start a business or, uh, you know, I mean, the financial part of it is the toughest part sometimes. And tribes, that's something that tribes have. Yes. A lot of tribes have the money to have the ability to do things. And instead, we, you know, write a check monthly or quarterly for a thousand dollars or something, you know. But I'd like to really like to see more money go into developing the freedom that a, a native a native person gets from being an entrepreneur. Yes, I. <laughs> I, I agree with all that. I agree with all that. I'm, I'm, we'll just leave it at that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, leave it at that. Okay. So let's talk about you personally, just kind of some of your stuff. So 
Um, tell me what the what's a day like in in the in your business. What you know, you get up in the morning. What hap- What do you do first? Okay, well that's kind of um, and that's what I'm working on is um, is the part of the self discipline. So mm-hmm. the the words that ring true to me is called truth, forgiveness, discipline. The truth is is it's already inside of you to be great. It's already inside of you to to overcome an addiction, to overcome a breakup, to overcome whatever hardship you're going through. And then you have to forgive yourself. I truly yeah. f- feel like, through especially through churches, you're 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 taught to ask God for forgiveness. You're taught to uh, to forgive each other. But the fundamental difference was nobody taught me how to forgive myself. Mm-hmm. And that guilt and the fear is real, and it steals from your creativity. So the last one is discipline. Is to find that self discipline, and that's the that's the one. Is I'm working on. Is I'm working on a shirt called Battle My Laziness. Is because my I used to be a sleeper. Yeah. I used to, I mean, I'm a procrastinator. So just to share with you, um, I, my routine is I try to, I tr- we get up by seven for sure. I'm trying to get up at six now, but we get up at, by seven. We have to go feed the animals, which is very good for my daughter, for her responsibility mm-hmm. um, to understand that. And it's a routine. So even though she's out of school, she still has to get up at seven. We allow her to sleep in at, at on Sundays, the only day they, they allow her to sleep mm-hmm. in. So we get up, we go feed the animals. We have a donkey, we have a pony. Um, and we have 17 head of cattle and we have three new calves and my daughter's going to be showing. So she's, mm-hmm. you know, right now we're really getting them used to being haltered and tied yeah. up and, and things like that. So uh, we do that about an hour and I come back. I either you try to work out at that point or, or, or I'll read or I'll do the vice versa. And yeah. that's kind of the thing is, you know, I want to be on a more of a schedule because I feel like, you know, if you can be in a better routine, you can get more things done. Yeah. So, yeah. And that's about it. And of course, in the yard work, whatever needs to be done around the house. And then I'm mm-hmm. constantly creating. So I live, I get thankful. So I want to just share this with you. If you start to do anything around the house and you start to feel depressed or get a depression and that's thinking too far in the past or anxiety thinking too far in the future, I get into the now moments. Mm-hmm. So I pay attention to my dog or I go out and weed eat and do something and now. And then you get thankful and then you get creative. So that's how I create all this is. I'm truly thankful for where I'm at, and then I ask empowering questions. Yeah, and that yeah. is the key. So go check out my video today because I I shared what empowering questions are, and also what disempowering questions are. And I feel like that's the part that we're missing yeah. is how to think. Yeah. Nobody's showing us how to think. You go to you feel good on Sundays, you feel good on Wednesdays, but I what I focus on those Mondays, the Tuesdays, yep. the Thursdays, the Friday when it's you versus you, that yep. little voice inside your head. What yeah. is that? I'll ask you, what are the eyes that can see past time? What is that voice? What do you think it is? What are the eyes that can see past time? So so right now, you can think right now back when you was a kid with your dad. You can vividly see it being in the uh-huh. garage. You can vividly watch him play the guitar, and you can get that emotions. What are those eyes? What are the eyes that can see when you only see you've seen this podcast? Mm-hmm. You've seen it, and then it becomes reality. What are those eyes? Wow, I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> I, I encourage you to do your research yeah. because that's the real you. Yeah. That's who you are. And so yeah. you have to be careful with those thoughts because you attract that. Yeah. You attract just that. And when you can understand how powerful your thoughts are yep. and what you are, you can understand how to control them, mm-hmm. those eyes. Yeah. And so now you only focus on what you want. Yep. Because you, if you if you speak for love, love will start to find you. You yeah. know, if you speak for responsibility, responsibility will start to find you. If you speak yeah. for discipline. So that's what I truly believe. So I'll be careful with those eyes. So... When you're in those deep thoughts and you start to feel depressed or you start to feel anxiety, anxious, that to me is your mind, your body saying mayday, yeah. mayday, change your thoughts, change yep. your thoughts because your emotions go where your thoughts go. So for mm-hmm. me, I get into the, my secret when I found it out was um, I would, I won, I was very fortunate. I bring this up a lot, but it, it's my secret. I won a state championship in high school, but before my daughter was born, my secret was is when I feel overwhelmed, who am I, why am I here, especially in college, I would close my eyes and I would vividly be at the state tournament. I would mm-hmm. remember plays that were calling. I'd remember coach yelling in my face. Yeah. I would remember the whistle blowing, the popcorn smells, and I would, you physically feel yourself calm down. Like yeah. you can actually feel the energy start to go and go down. And mm-hmm. I was like, aha, there is power in your yeah. mind. There's power yeah. in your oh, thoughts. Yeah. And that's when I really start focusing and start understanding how to hone in mm-hmm. on the emotions that I want. And it's okay to get frustrated. It's okay to, so I do get mad still. I do get frustrated. I do get angry. The key is I don't remain in those emotions. Yeah. I, and that's the key. So when you're in that moment of being angry, what's the mechanism that you have that reminds you, hey, I need to be thinking about these other get things? Get into the now moment. So you got to get into the now moment. So for me, especially my dogs, you got to think about it. Animals are just in the now moment. Yeah. They're not thinking of nothing else except, so I actually talk to my dogs if they're human as well. So mm-hmm. I'm really like, 
you know what I mean? I hope did you sleep good? Did you whatever? And it gets my mind into like, okay, I'm now, and then I get to think for it. What yeah. am I thankful for? And I, it's so easy to look around and see what I'm, I mean, because I get so simple of even my eyes. There's people that are blind. Yeah. There's people that we grew up that we know yeah. a brother didn't have his arm his whole life, so he never got to play sports, you know? Mm-hmm. And so you can get that simple in your mind to get that thankful. And once you have a thankful thought, and then you start living in your imagination. Yeah. And, your, and everything is designed in the imagination that you see. This brewer, this Sky Dance Brewing was designed in the imagination. Mr. Jake Keys believed in it so strongly that it became a reality. So this mm-hmm. actually was designed twice. Yeah. yeah, that's what that means. You design, and the only reason it's a reality is because you believed it so hard that it becomes yeah. it becomes in the reality of the world. So yeah. when you look around at everything and you see how what the mind has done, you see what we're able to accomplish when you have a positive energy when you're thankful and you're dreaming big and you're willing to put in the work there is absolutely nothing yeah. that can stop you and then when you have collectively people your your corner praying for you the more people you share your idea with and they're thinking on it with you now you're truly moving mountains yeah. because that's an energy force that's going in the right direction and i want to before i change the direction to ask what i feel like with the tribes is we bicker and we argue and we focus on all the things that we yeah. have the differences we all love our kids we all love our grandparents we all love our culture we all yeah. love education my goal is to get us to start focusing on the things that yep. we want so we can start attracting those faster yeah and so that's a part of my business is to share that is like collectively start focusing on the things that we want that's yep. what it's all about yeah yeah i feel like i definitely know you will we'll go to a general council meeting or something and it feels like people will get up and and complain about somebody or try to cut somebody down for and and the reasons sometimes is it's weird to really try to even understand what their purpose or reason is but one thing i've noticed is i think they just want to be heard yes i think for so long people in in native american tribes or people from from our culture have not been heard Mm-hmm. And they they want to get up and just say something, yeah, right? And yes. but but the problem is they just have this tendency to to it's negative. Yes, it's all negative. And they say it so much that it just leaks into their behavior, and everything kind of is negative in their entire life, you know. So I think like, man, I would encourage you to really the things you're saying today on this podcast, like find ways to say that kind of stuff, talk like that, talk talk that wisdom and those thoughts to your people mm-hmm. as much as possible, man. To me, that's how we make a big difference, yes. you know, with our with our tribes and stuff. So, but you know, a lot of a lot of us growing up didn't have uh entrepreneurs, leaders for us to look at as an example to learn these things. So, let me ask you like in your younger life or before you became an entrepreneur, who are some of the people that influenced you that kind of actually got you to this mindset that you have now? Uh, for sure, my grandpa Vic, um, my grandpa Victor Rivera, uh, that's where the Puerto Rican, he was a Pentecostal preacher. Anybody from back home that ever watched him preach, uh, his or revivals we used to have at the yeah. White Church in Carnegie, he gave his all. Like yeah. he gave you his, I mean, he's dancing just, whoo, yeah. and like, so when you left, you left feeling really good. And so that was for sure, you know, a big influence. My father, you know, it definitely is, is next because he's been through a lot, you know, kids don't come with instructions, yeah. you know? And so uh, as we was younger, you know, we've been through a lot with, with our father, but as we're older, you know, he's our best friend now. And I have, I understand it, you know, especially now that I have a daughter, you know, I do understand that, man, you almost got to make up things on the fly. Yeah. I mean, because I can speak all this positivity to everybody, but yet my daughter, I'm still fighting with her to have to yeah. clean her room. You yeah. know what I mean? Where it, and I, so I definitely understand that in a better sense. So definitely my dad, um, I would say number three was another huge, huge part of my life. Cause it's Mr. Randy Barnett. He was a I worked at a juvenile facility when I was 21 to 26. And the director of that juvenile facility was uh, Randy. He had his doctor in psychology. He mm-hmm. was the most smartest person I ever met, but yet the humblest person. Yeah. And he had taught me a lot about the power of your mind, the power of thoughts, meaning he was teaching these kids. Mm-hmm. I I just was listening and I started using yeah. it. So uh, he was three and then uh, for sure, uh, Papa Lewis, uh, my wife's Papa, um, Lewis Faust, he, um, he was 80. When I met him, he was had to be like 83 or so. 
He was part of World War II. I used to cut his hair, and we had vivid conversations. What was cool is his body was breaking down on him, but his mind was sharp. Mm -hmm. And he would tell me stories of like 1928, January 2nd, yeah. you know, and like he was real vivid. And he told me stories about World War II. Um, his feet froze. And he said that there was, um, I would, just fast forward, it was so cold over there, and they were left out there for two weeks, his feet froze, and they yeah. turned black, and he always had problems with his feet, and I only heard that man complain once, and it was just to kind of laugh about it, but he said they hurt constantly, Kevin, and I said, you know what, I'm gonna have, um, I'm gonna have my mom and dad, you know, pray for you, you know yeah. what I mean, keep you in the prayers, and he said this, he said, you know, I don't care if they pray standing on their head, I can use all the prayers I can get. Mm -hmm. He was a man that walked the walk. So he went to church every Sunday and every Wednesday, went up there and asked you to pray for her. But he, when he came to, he checked on our house. He came and seen Kenley, my, my, my daughter, if not every day, every other day. Yeah. And he walked the love. Yeah. He never spit a scripture at me. He never, he just asked me, are you okay? Do you need anything? Anytime I went over there to the farm, he'd come out there and, you know, made sure I was okay. Yeah. And he, he was a definition to me of walking the walk. Yeah. And that really was a big part of, because when he passed away, that was his farm. That was yeah. like, okay, I want to give my all and help maintain this place because I had a lot of respect for yeah. him. So, um, and I guess, you know, I definitely can go to my brothers from that point because, you know, definitely Sean and Daniel, but they're both big part of my growth. And definitely mm -hmm. Sean, I mean, we've been really close and you know, he's five years older than me, my other one's seven, but you know, me and, me and Sean was closer, so I would definitely put him as my yeah. fifth inspiration because, you know, he's all in on his craft, yeah. like, you know, and so that's what it's all about. Yeah. Is your, is your daughter into dancing? Yes. Yeah? Yes. She's Southern Cloth. We, uh, she, Southern Cloth and Southern Buckskin. And yeah. so, um, yeah, I'm really excited for her because that's all she knows. Yeah. So she doesn't know anything else. So I, we actually was able to start a generation now within yeah. the family that... Yeah. And so that we have my grandmother on my on my Kiowa side had seven sisters and and uh, two brother. Uh, she had seven daughters and two uh, two brothers. My dad did that six sisters and two bro one brother. There was nine of them. Make a mm -hmm. long story short. And um, dang it, lost my train of thought on that one. <laughs> we can let, skip that. Let one. me let me ask you this: when you went, when you decided, hey, I want to get back in touch with you know my my native culture and heritage. Mm -hmm. I want to get into dancing and that kind of stuff. So, you know, there's a lot of a lot of people kind of like us that maybe didn't in the early days grow up with, around their tribe that like we talked about how that happens a lot. Yes. So what you know, how did your elders, um, the people within your tribe, how welcoming were they to have you? back in and 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 being involved like that i am so glad you asked because that's goes in exactly what i was saying i'm sorry is basically um i was so nervous because again i'm starting late yeah. and everybody knows that the revere family there's nobody that dances so where there's a revere branch you have the Kamartley branch you have the bread branch mm -hmm. you have the uh Oh, there's a few other my aunts, um, but but basically we're the only ones in my Revere branch. Nobody danced, and basically yeah. my grandma married, so that's why the Revere. Yeah. But um, so it was nervous at first, but I'll tell you where I got my the true inspiration was my daughter. Um, they brought me out at this. I think it was a Stevenson powwow. Um, we were setting up as a booth, but my grandfather had let me know when grandfather in. He let me know the KGC story, mm -hmm. and we have a Satok song, family song. And so he wanted to, he wanted, I wanted to dance, you know, told me the story of the Red Wolf and told me everything, gave me my first fan, my first, uh, my first blanket that my grandma Vivian had made and uh, my gourd. And they brought me in. The, uh, Kenley went out there with a the shawl. She knew nothing of it. And that night when it was doing inner tribal, I was like, you want to go out there in the tribal is anybody, as long as you have a shawl as far as women and anybody yeah. can go out there and dance. And she went by herself. Oh yeah, by herself, and it was her, and she gave me strength to be like, yeah. God, dogs, like she's out there by herself, yeah. and she didn't, she just felt a sense of you know self respect, and that's why I want to, that's why I want her, yes, belonging, yeah. and so it really, that's what inspired me a little. Does she know? Um, because there was one point in time that I ever asked her from that point, you want to go out there? She's like, Yep, where's my, where's my shawl? Where's my yeah. shawl? And then we yeah. really started. Uh, so it was nervous but everybody accepted me with open arms yeah and that's the most beautiful part so yeah. i encourage anybody that if you are looking to possibly get into learning your culture learning your language maybe possibly trying to dance i encourage you to do it because you have little little do you know that it really makes our elders excited yeah because um it the traditions will carry on and yeah. that's how they all looked at it yeah. i've actually had people our elders tell me i won't tell you who but i dance with my whole heart yeah. i dance with everything so when you see me 
I want I dance so hard because I tell you, you dance for your elders, you dance for those that can't dance, you dance for the sick, you dance for the widows, you you know you dance. But I want I dance so hard that if it's just two or three minutes that you're watching, you know I truly want you to just be so excited within those two or three minutes and not yeah. forget about anything, yep. you know. And so and that's that's where. Yeah, that's where that comes from as far as I encourage you to actually do it and mm -hmm. try it because it's never, I've never felt more alive. Yeah. In the last four, I was solid four years. I know it's five of the business, but solid four since I really started dancing. I'm never, because I know who I am. And because yeah. how I carry myself before, they would ask me, what are you? Mm -hmm. Like not even what your ethnicity. They're like, your last name's Latino. You yeah. sound white and you yeah. say you're Indian. <laughs> and so I was like, dang, man, now they ask me what tribe are you? Yeah. Because the way I carry myself. And so I've never felt more alive because of that. So, yeah. yeah. So one day you'll be one of the elders, <laughs> right? Uh, hopefully. Yeah. So when that time comes and people are looking back on your life, what do you hope that you're known for? Uh, forgiving. Um, I, I was a true point guard in high school, meaning I passed first, shot second. And mm -hmm. so that goes on to my life. I love to drop dimes because I understand yeah. the game. Is, if I didn't penetrate that gap and give it to you, you have to make it. But, you know, I always felt like the same satisfaction. So in life, my brother's got a funny saying. They call me uh, the prophet. Mm -hmm. And it's just a joke between the family. But it's anything that I learn new, I truly do want to share it with people. Yeah, I truly do. Like, I just get so excited because I feel like that's what we're here for is to share the knowledge, share what you gain. And so, like, if if what I my story can just help one or two people, truly, that's what it's about. Because yeah. how many people are they influencing? Yep. And it's just a connective. It's, it's just connecting. Yeah. So about giving and basically be all in yeah whatever you choose to do be all in that's yeah. what i want you guys to remember and don't be scared to fail yeah. because you you truly do not know what success is if you don't know what failure is yeah and yeah. so basically we're, we give back well, we got to be all in to give back yeah in yeah. order for you to give back you truly have to be all in in your craft yeah that's cool man that's cool so in the future do you have plans for uh any kind of political stuff within the tribe that's a darn good question i I took, I'm glad you asked this. So the goal really was was to to possibly run for the chairman of the Apache tribe. Yeah. And um, there's a lot of elders that really want me to. And I was supposed to run this term, but I had a goal of getting the business to a certain level yeah. before I did that. But now my banker, shout out to Don Tyson, I've been, been banking with Fort Cobb since I was 16. And uh, he had told me a story. And he said, I was telling him I was about to run. And he said, you know, Kevin, he said, let me tell you something. He said, uh, he, said, I, he said, I started this job at Fort Cobb in 1983. And he said, I knew the owner very well mm -hmm. of the bank. And it's a private bank. And he said that they wanted him to be a part of the Lions Club and part of the school board because he was a business owner. And he yeah. said, he told me this, that I don't want to be a part of any of that because if I have to come down to make a right cho a difficult choice and it was the right choice, he said, it's like a referee. You're not, you're, somebody's always going to be upset yeah. and they can start bagging my company, bagging my business. He said, so he chose to stay out of politics because he felt like it was going to, and so he said, I just want to share that with you. He said, you have your own business. And he gave me the example was Coach Hines from back home. Shout out to Coach Hines, Fort Cobb Rock, since where I'm from. He's got seven championships, you know, and he said, it's like this. He said, say that you're on the school board at Fort Cobb and that everybody wants to uh, fire Coach Hines. Yeah. And he said, you're the only one that's voting not to, but you yeah. get outvoted. He said, the whole town, you know what I mean? You, even though you was against it, the whole town, the rumors, yeah. everybody, that you got, he said, so just be careful with politics because cause you own your own business. Yeah. So I really felt like I want to create Modern Tribal Motivations nonprofit and create a boys and girls club for back home yeah. um, and in the dark. And I feel like I possibly could help more of staying independent because yeah. then the Wichita tribe can help. Say the Kiowa tribe can help. Say we can get help. But I feel like if I go out just under my tribe, you know, the bitterness of, yeah. you know, we can do that, you know. Yeah. So um, it was, but I'm definitely, it's, it's around 90, 10 now of staying independent mm -hmm. and um, it's helping as many tribes as I can yeah. instead yeah. of just one, but yeah. representing my tribe. Yeah, yeah. Man, I hope you follow through with, you know, with, with oh, that. Yeah. I think you could make a big impact, you know. What's the what's the one thing, the big thing about, about Kevin that uh, is going to make his business successful? What's the one the thing about you that really gets you through the difficult times? You know, we've had the, the virus. I know that's had to have had an impact on, on maybe a little bit of your business. Uh, or maybe not. Maybe not. I mean, I know online business hasn't been quite as affected as a, a much as much as like restaurants and stuff. Yeah. But what's the thing about you that gets you through uh, all these difficult times? I'm all in. That's the best way I can explain it. I'm all in, and I live in my vision. Yeah. So 
when you understand what your goals are, what your visions are, and your imagination, it's all one and the same. And the reason that I, what I want to share with our youth for sure is to understand how to set goals and why to set goals. Yeah. And when you understand why, what it does is it pulls you through your tough times. Mm -hmm. Life is going to happen to all of us mm -hmm. from you can't, from possible diseases to possible your dog dying to you breaking your ankle, whatever. Life wrecks. Life's going to happen. Yeah. But how you handle it's everything. Yeah. It's everything. I yeah. mean, true. And that's what I want to share with, with the youth is just that is um and you got to be all in what about on the other end of that what's your biggest weakness as a entrepreneur uh the lack of knowledge you know you don't know what you don't know mm -hmm. so i i thought i was ready for shark tank two years ago yeah yeah, yeah I, I, never, you know, I didn't know nothing you yeah. know I truly for the last six months it's all starting to make sense as far as what revenue is cost of goods your expenses and how to get to net profit it's just yeah. not making sense so it's just really the lack of knowledge um, I'm all in as far as I do my research but I'm more of a hands on person so like this I would learn more because I can ask you questions and you can physically show me Yeah. so so my wife does really good at reading instructions I do really good at looking at the pictures Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. that if that well, before I get to my last question, I just want to acknowledge you, man, for like definitely the the hustle and the no give up that it takes to start a company from a cell phone, right? I <laughs> um, also want to acknowledge you for the amount of passion you have for making a difference in people's lives. I think that's something that's going to carry you even as far as your business goes, mm -hmm. right? When people see that you're trying to make a difference uh, for, for the world, not just, not just for native Americans, not just for your tribe, team but human. Yeah. For everybody, you know, trying to inspire people. I can, I can hear the passion. Um, I think that's, that's something that really pulls me through on my business is just having that passion for, mm. for, for doing that. But I just want to acknowledge that, man, like your, your live Facebook live videos, man, they're great. Uh, <laughs> the energy level. I mean, sometimes I'll, I'll see you go live on Facebook at a time when I'm like having my first cup of coffee, <laughs> you know, wow. you know, sometimes I'm up super early. Sometimes maybe it's a little bit later, you know, yeah. but to see you with that energy, mm -hmm. you know, right off the bat, you know, it's pretty cool. So my last question, I always call it the one thing, uh, we kind of touched on it a little bit already maybe, but, uh, you've got a, a young Apache or a Kiowa, uh, entrepreneur, somebody who wants to be an entrepreneur and they're looking at you for advice, for help. They look up to you. Um, what's the one thing you would tell them? What's the one piece of advice that you would leave behind on this earth for somebody like that in that situation? It's a good question. There's a few things, but um, your mindset. Yeah. It's all about your mindset. It's all about the, the, how you talk to yourself, the yeah, eyes straight. that can see past time. So yeah. I would encourage you to focus on that and start to talk to yourself in a positive way. You can't give what you don't have. Yeah. I truly believe that. So if you don't love yourself, if you don't understand how to love yourself and take care of yourself, you can't give that. Yeah. And so that means what that means is you're constantly trying to take other people's perspectives of you and live up to that live up to that because you yeah. don't know yourself so i would encourage you to ask empowering questions research what empowering questions are so when you're coming across the problem as a youth and you're coming across this whatever ask yourself literally um how what's trying to emerge in my life that's an empowering question what should I, when you're right when you're in the problem that's you have to start asking yourself don't ask why me don't ask don't try to blame other people because guess what your brain will start to search for that too it's yeah. very easy to blame people it's very easy yeah. to put that so what you got to do is start asking empowering questions and understand that the power is already inside of you yeah like it's already there so it's not you're never going to find your belief system in nobody else yeah nothing so your mom can believe in you your dad can believe in you your coaches can believe in you, your teachers your aunts your grandma's been tell you believe in yourself yeah it won't matter so that's what i would really share with you is you have to believe in yourself and then you got to go all in yeah and yeah. you got to be willing to take the bumps. You got to be willing and then do your research. There's so many people that's already, you don't have to rewrite the wheel. There's so many people that's left the blueprint yeah. behind. So a big part of what I also do is listen to motivational stuff. So I just don't do it on my, I listen to it 24 seven because it helps give my mind a fighting chance. Yeah. You know, so yeah, that's what I like. To yeah. Do. Well, cool, man. Man, I really appreciate you coming on. Uh, just a lot of the way that you think and go about stuff. I feel like, I don't know, man, we might've been related back there, <laughs> back there, Wodies, you know? So I appreciate you coming on. And, uh, so why don't you tell everybody where they, where they can find you, find your product. Awesome. Well, we're at moderntribalnations.com. I have a lot of sales going on. What those sales are for is to get rid of the old inventory. And so we can start this new path. 
Um, for me, again, I'm constantly looking at the positive things. So I know this pandemic is, go is going on, but I'm choosing to see this as a reset button. And so my whole passion was to come out with the uh, business casual slash athleisure wear. That was the goal and just have my logo sell it. And this allowed me to do that. So I put everything on sale and we're going to slowly start going into this new direction. So you can find us on moderntribalnations.com. Facebook, Modern Tribal Nations LLC, and Instagram is Modern underscore Tribal underscore Nations underscore. That's so how I didn't put the underscores in there. They did it themselves. Yeah. But uh, right now, that's where you can find me. Um, we're definitely looking to possibly talking with Mr. Jake Keys, but possibly doing a podcast. I really love the, uh, you, the, way, the way you did the interview, the way you asked the questions. It really made me feel comfortable. It didn't feel like an interview, yeah. so I really appreciate that, and I would like to learn from that, to possibly start our own podcast, maybe even together. Um, and then also... Um, I want to basically, like you said, with the YouTube channel, you know, go ahead and start yeah. developing that and start getting more content out there because it's all about connecting and help inspiring That's each other. It, yeah. And just remember, somebody's always watching you. Yeah. You're leading somebody. Just what are you leading them to? Yeah. Cool. Aho, brother. Appreciate it. Thanks for coming on, man. All, right, all in. Casey didn't think we were going to get so deep on the, at this late at night, huh? No, man. I, I could tell when he came in. This guy's got a lot of energy, man. I mean, there's there's a lot of things uh, uh, about this guy that that I could tell. Man. Yeah. He's Appreciate an inspiring it. dude, and Appreciate it. One of, one of the things that he said that really kind of hit home with me is, man, there's thousands of versions of you out there. Yeah. I've never really thought about it in that yeah. perspective. Yeah. And, yeah. and I am a kind of guy that, man, I I wouldn't say I care what others think. I I do some dumb stuff and don't care, but <laughs> yeah. in the back of my mind, at times, I'm like, man. Yeah. Somebody's watching me. Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? And, yeah. and it does bother me at times. You, man, you've known me for Yeah. Years, yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, so that really hit home with me, man. That's something I'm going to yeah. take away from this deal. And, and man, yeah. I really appreciate it, man. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, cool. It's been a great episode. Um, man, we did three, we did three recordings in one day. A lot of people that'll listen to this don't, wow. might not know that we do uh, batch recordings like that. But I got to say, man, for it being the third interview of the day, I was worried about having enough energy to get through it. <laughs> but man, like he said, the minute you walked in, man, you brought the energy. We maybe almost didn't even need these lights. You brought so much energy. <laughs> oh, yeah, <so>. man. <laughs> He's a shining star. That's yeah, for sure. Yeah. Man. Yeah. So, all right, guys, thanks for everybody that's listening on iTunes, Spotify, watching on YouTube. Uh, make sure that you like and subscribe to our channel. Make sure you uh, download the the podcast when it, whenever you get a chance. And cheers to everybody! Thanks for hanging out with us. Aho, ho.